Now we look at the formula between running time and number of basic operations. <coughs> Let's use some notations here. The function of the running time, let's use t of n as the function of the running time. Yeah. Another function of the number of basic operations used, c of n. Yeah. We count, yeah. <coughs> counting, okay. c of n. Right. So now we want to see what's the relationship between these two functions. And another assumption, execution time of a basic operation. We use a notation, C sub OP. Yeah. Yeah. Operation, OP, yeah. basic operation, yeah. C, yeah. the cost. Okay. Yeah. Exe yeah. So we have that. It's a constant, COP, uh, constant. Okay. All right, now the formula. Here, we need to take approximate approach. Yeah. Approximate approach. Yeah. Because it's very hard to write things precisely. Yeah. So most of the time, we will use approximation. Yeah. Here, the running time approximately equals C op times number of basic operations. So definitely, this is not a precise formula. Why? Why? Because we only c compute execution time used on, run, uh, on basic operations. For non-basic operations, we do not compute, right? Non-basic, for example, addition in problem number one, we do not include it. So not very precise. Okay, yeah. but you know, remember you know the dominant term. So talk about so you know we use the dominant term approximate. So we get a pretty good approximation. Yeah. So it is good enough. Okay. Yeah. So we are satisfied with approximation like this. Yeah. All right. Here you can see what's the relationship of those two functions, they are proportional. Okay. So the difference is only one constant factor. Yeah. Yeah. That's the difference. Okay. Yeah. So, so close. If it is so close, then most of the time we will use this function to measure our running time function. Because running time function is too hard to measure. Okay. But that counting number much easier to measure. Right. So we prefer using that count number. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So next approximation approach. Now, yeah, we will do a lot of approximation. But how do we do approximation? Yeah. So, what terms we ignore? Yeah. Some of the terms we will ignore. Yeah. So we look at that issue. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. <coughs> What's the correct way? Yeah. Let's see. Uh, first observation. Yeah. Efficiency of algorithm is reflected when the input size is large. OK? Yeah. So, yeah. That's our first observation. Only when the input size is large, then efficiency is an important issue, right? When the size is small, it's not an issue. Our computer is so powerful, so you know, response time very fast. So we don't worry. 
we mainly we worry about when the, your data size is very large. Then even we have a supercomputer, still it is very slow. Okay? Yeah, we worry about that kind of, you know, bottleneck. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For small inputs, it is hard to distinguish efficient algorithms from inefficient ones. Yeah? For small input size, suppose you have two algorithms, a more efficient one could be slower than less efficient one for small input size. Could be. Why? Because the overhead. More efficient one, you may need more overhead. Because when you do preparation, you spend more time. Okay? But why we say it's more efficient algorithm? Because when the data size is large, our overhead is fixed. So we do not increase our overhead. Okay? So the overhead spread to large size, so then it will be more efficient. Okay? So that observation tells us we should focus on large data size, not small data size. Okay? Yeah. Small data size we can ignore. Okay? We can ignore, safely ignore it. Yeah. Not important. Conclusion. Yeah. When we do analysis on algorithms, we should focus on large inputs. Okay. And the efficient at small inputs is not important. Completely ignore it. You know. Overhead. So keep in mind there is an overhead problem. Yeah. So all right. Inch uh, right. Uh, right, but but when we do the work, we need s special notations. Our notations should make us focus on large inputs. So in our notations, we do not look at the relatively small inputs. Yeah. So we will have the definitions for our notations considering this conclusion. Okay. All right. Ignore unnecessary details. In our approximation, we ignore unnecessary details. So what are the unnecessary details? Okay. Let's take a look at this formula. Now, let's look at the, you know, many items we treat not that important. We can ignore. Okay. First, yeah, based on our notation, so the running time function, number of basic operations, yeah, just recall. And cost of the basic operation yeah, in this formula. Okay. Here, the cost we know. So, usually we use execution time for the cost. Okay. Yeah. Uh, approach. Yeah, so, our simplification approach. Yeah, we want to use a simple way to describe. Remove unnecessary details to reveal the most important factor. Yeah. How? Yeah. Can we ignore some constants? So here you can see this is a constant. Okay? Is this constant important? Right? Yeah. Not that important. Okay? Yeah. Although, so it will, you know, it has some limited importance. Can we ignore some minor terms? Yeah. Because when we talk about dominant terms, uh, other than the dominant term, there are many minor terms. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so now first let's look at the, this constant, if this constant is important or not. Okay. When we double the input size, yeah, think about it. We double the input size.
it becomes harder, okay? but how much harder? How much more execution time you need to use? Okay, yeah. So let's do that calculation. The ratio, after you double the problem size, do the ratio on the running time. Okay? Approximately, because the constant cancel out, right? Numerator, denominator, both constant cancel out. That constant is gone. So if you, you look at the ratio, the constant is not important. Okay? That means we can ignore, okay? We can ignore that constant. Okay? It's a good thing because usually most of the time, that constant is very hard to find. That constant is very hard to find. How, how can you find it? The, the exact time used for multiplication or for comparison. Who can find that? Nobody can find that. Okay? So that's why most of the time we ignore it because it's not that important. Okay? Yeah, because of that formula, Cancel out. Yeah. All right. Yeah, because this ratio can already tell us how fast your algorithm changes when you increase the problem size, right? Yeah, when you increase your problem size, how fast your algorithm changes. Yeah, it's you know good enough for us. Yeah, so we can safely. Ignore that C up constant. Okay. All right. Then the minor terms. No. Keep the major term. Okay. Yeah. Or we use the dominant term. Right. So the major term we mean the dominant term. Yeah. Regarding the dominant term. So at this point. I do not give you a precise description on the dominant term, yeah. but uh, at some point I will, when we see concrete examples, I will explain more details about the dominant term. How do you find the dominant term? Okay. Yeah. So we have many examples. In this lecture, we have many examples. We will see that. Okay. All right. Another concept, the growth function to measure efficiency. Growth function concept. Yeah. Growth function. Yeah. So after we find that C of n function, C of n function, yeah, we ignore many important constant terms at the end we will get the growth function of our algorithm so let's look at this concept what's the meaning of the growth function so let's recall a selection sort okay, selection sort okay? yeah in the selection sort we have that number right yeah so here just recall that is the, you know, C function, right? C of n is this one. Okay? Yeah. Here we want to see what is that growth, growth function. Okay. Yeah. Here we also know, uh, yeah, this thing. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That means for any given input, we always get this number. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Then let's expand it by expand the formula. We have two terms. First, we want to see which one is dominant. Two terms. Which term is dominant? Yeah, the first one is dominant, right? But how can you tell me the first the first term dominates the second one? How can you tell me that? Okay. How do you explain the first 
term dominates the second term. Well, and it has to be a positive number of, of places in the array, so any positive number counts itself. Oh, yeah. All right, positive, yeah. But don't look at this, OK? Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. So we do not look at that. We just look at absolute value. Okay, we compare absolute values. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, you see negative number, you do not compare. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. no, okay. No question. All right. Now, let me show you the, the meaning of dominance. What is the exact meaning of dominance? Okay. We have math formula for it. Okay. View the dominant term in a mathematical way. So what's that? Mathematical. We calculate the limit. Okay? The calculus. Here we need to use the calculus. Calculate the limit. Okay? We take the ratio of the two terms. We calculate the limit when n goes to infinity. We want to see this limit. It can tell us which one dominates which one. Because we worry about large data size. That means n is very large. Yeah? So that's why n goes to infinity can tell us that trend. right? Yeah. So after cancellation, we simplify the fraction. After cancellation, the limit of n. That's infinity. Right? That's a simple, simple limit. That is infinity. The ratio is infinity. Definitely, the top one dominates the bottom one. No? The ratio is infinity. Yeah. That's a strong indication. Yeah. Dominance. Yeah. That's the meaning of the dominance. Okay? Yeah. So, dominant terms. Yeah. <coughs> so, later, when you talk about dominant term, I think, you know, you know, what, what's the exact meaning of it? Okay. Any question? No. No. Here, it's a simple limit. Okay. Very simple. You don't have any problem. Yeah. But in the later units of this lecture, you will see several relatively harder limits. We will use several uh, calculus techniques to find the limits. Calculus. We need a calculus to find the limits. Yeah. So the next time you will see all those examples. So based on the calculus. So I give you some you know short review. Yeah. As I said in the first class, all the formulas I use in this class I will list in a sheet. Okay. List in a sheet, you know, telling you, you know, which lecture on which page. So when you study, so you have that sheet, you know, so you can. Oh, by the way, another thing, uh, just remind you, this week we will have our exercise number one, exercise set number one. Yeah. But for self study, it's not homework assignment. Okay? Exercise number one. Exactly the same as the homework format, but I do not collect. I post answers for your self-study. Okay? In review session, I will explain that. We will have a review session for test one. Yeah. So I will explain all the relatively hard questions in exercises, homework. You know. yeah. all right. Just you know, let you... Uh, be aware of it. All right. So now we can see this is the dominant term. Okay? But in this dominant term, as we know, this coefficient can be ignored, right? Yeah? C up part, right? Similar to that C up part. Okay? Yeah. The coefficient like this, we can ignore. Okay? So after we ignore it, we have n square function. And in this function is our growth function. So we define our growth function. We try to simplify it as much as we can. Okay? So we ignore 
you know, all those relatively less important things, eh, the last, the most important thing that is left, that's the growth function, n square function. Yeah. So we can use n square to describe this algorithm. This algorithm has this n square growth function. That's a good description. Okay? So if you can get that conclusion, so people know how good is the algorithm. N square. You just tell them n square. You don't need to tell them one half times n square. Okay? That one half is not important. Okay. All right. All right. So that is our growth function. Okay. So that's the concept. Okay. And uh, when we compare algorithm, most of the time we compare the growth function. Yes, big O, our next lecture, we will have a full discussion on big O, big omega, you know, big theta, you know, yeah. So I hope you do not get overwhelmed, yeah. So those very abstract notations, okay. All right, so that's the, you know, end of this uh, lecture, uh, not, you know, this class.